We are back. And we're sitting in with my man, lawyer, activist, all sorts of things. Mr. Paul Wynn. Hey. How you doing? Good, good. Thank man, you for inviting me. Man, it's good to see you, man. It. I appreciate it. I, I'm, I'm excited to be in your presence, you understand? <laughs> hey, hey, <no>. Because <laughs> this, is a, this is a dude that's done some big things, man. He's been, you know, let's just get into talking about to him. So yeah. you were the host of a, of a TV show called The Canadians. Yeah. How long ago was that? It was the early 80s. Yeah. yeah. There was a show that went, went national from based out of Vancouver, but we went national and did shows all across the country on different ethnic groups. And, yeah. and the, the idea came about because um, they felt that can, Canadian television was, was too white bread. Yeah. There, weren't, there weren't any non-white people doing things in front of the camera. And so, uh, <laughs> so that's how I, I lucked in and okay. got, got selected. So you, you were the actual first African-American, yeah. African-Canadian African -Canadian to be on TV. Well, uh, hosting a hosting show. Hosting a yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, what was that like? It was different. It was different. It had a lot of perks. Yeah. A lot of perks. I used to get free drinks in bars and things. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, it was funny seeing your picture on a billboard as you go down the street, you know. So that was kind of cool. you. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Man. Yeah. Went to my head a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but you're a lawyer. And you also started up, you were, the, you were actually the, the president of the Black Historical Cultural Society. I mean, how did that get started? Well, there was, we started that back in 1982. Yeah. And um, I was sort of a little annoyed that the school system didn't give enough emphasis in its courses and history and mm -hmm. whatnot that reflected the black presence in this society. Right. You know, because I said, well, it's part of Canadian history, but it seems to be left out. Mm -hmm. You know, like it, we call it black history, but it's really just a, the part of history that the blacks in Canada played. Exactly. You know? Kind of so, watered down a little bit. Yeah. So I wanted it emphasized a little more and focused on it. Okay. Bit. Yeah. So it was, uh, that now, was how we did it. Being the president, though, what did you have to do? Well, you had to, had to get a lot of people behind you, yeah. you know, to support you. And, uh, and of course, everybody was was interested in the subject. You mm -hmm. know, they, they 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 agreed with what I was doing. It wasn't so radical that uh, I wasn't trying to burn buildings down or anything. I was just trying <laughs> to get some emphasis. So, uh, so there was a lot of support. There was yeah. a lot of support in there from the white community too, because exactly. thinking, yeah, there was a need for this, and and so um, we started uh, having regular things, particularly during Black History Month. We, right. we really emphasized a lot okay. of stuff during then. Yeah. Now. Back then, I mean, I'm thinking back then, how was Black History Month, or was it even perceived as Black History Month per se? Not, not originally. Like yeah. when, when I, if, I, if I could sort of go back to, like when I, in, and I was in high school in the 50s, mm -hmm. and um, you know there was there was nothing. I mean, there was never any Black History Month. And, right. And living in Vancouver. I mean, I could go. I could go a long time without seeing another black person. <laughs> it, it was, uh, you know, and, uh, ah. except, except in school. Of course, I had my, my partner uh, Harry and, yeah. and I were in school together. So, so that was. Um, I could see him, but any other blacks, it was a really okay. Hard now press. that leads us right into my next my next question, and you were like roommates with Harry Jerome. Yeah, yeah, we we. Um, we were friends from this, you know, from the time we were 16 to, well, he died at 42, so right. all those years, yeah. When we lived together, after we got out of school, we roomed together for about eight years, shared apartment, yeah. Okay, yeah. so now how old would he be right now then? He'd be 71. 71. Yeah, yeah, so he's, he's just, wow. uh, he's, he, he's a year younger than me. Okay. Yeah, so, and our birthdays were a day apart. You know, so when we used to have house parties yeah, for did. birthdays, <laughs> at midnight I tell him his party's over, mine begins. Mine begins. That's the way it worked. Yeah. Now he, um, what was it, Phil, Phil somebody, Phil Hughes. Phil Fraser. Phil Fraser yeah. wrote a book. Yeah, Running Uphill. Running Uphill. That was the life of uh, Harry Jerome. Right. Yeah. Now, were you in that book? Yeah, yeah, I mentioned, uh, you know, because, uh, in fact, I gave the title to, to uh, Phil. Yeah. Because in, we were in Saskatoon. In training, uh, like competing to get on the Olympic team, mm -hmm. and 
Harry ran and set the world's record for the 100 meters right. at that, in that race. And of course, whenever you set a world record, they have to measure the track to make sure it was 100 meters, mm -hmm. and they have to see if it was level. But it was, it was a quarter inch high from the start to the finish. So it was higher at the end than it was by a quarter inch. Oh, so, so I said he was running up. Running you know, uphill, by, okay. By a quarter of an inch. <laughs> you know. Now, when you guys were running, you guys were running against some big people back in the day because oh, yeah. that's 19. Well, it was in 50 the, something, yeah, right? the 57, 58, 59, so that's, 60, yeah. That civil rights movement, man. Oh, the civil rights movement was ramp, you know, rampant at that time. Right. You know, Canada, Canada spilled over a little bit. Because, you know, Canadians basically are closet bigots, you right. know what I mean? And, and it's, um, the, particularly in those days, the, the, the parents. Right. The parents, not so much the kids we were in high school with, they, they tended to embrace the civil rights movement and try to uh, do it, emulate it here. Yeah. But the parents, you know, because I'm in a high school in North Van and... You're Harry's, probably the only, Harry's, only black Harry's guy. the other black <laughs> guy in school. So when when you as a teenager you want to you want to go out and dates and things. Well, there's only white girls. Well, the parents weren't going to have any of that. Mm, you know, you, none you, of that. Yeah, you because know, because we were perceived black people, black men particularly, right. were perceived as urban bogeymen. You know, like there was, people were afraid <laughs> of us. And I, I don't know. I don't know why. I think we're sweet, loving, and charming. I, I don't know. I, hey, I believe so. <laughs> okay. Well, see, that's, that's here. Two out of two. What can we say? That's 100%. Oh, man. <laughs> now, with the civil rights movement going in the U.S., I mean, how did it affect you or, let's say, black people in general in Canada? I think, I think it gave us a little bit of impetus here right. to, to, to try and correct some of the imbalances that existed mm -hmm. here. You know, because there was, a lot, there was a lot of discrimination in this, this area with particularly around housing and employment. That, yeah. was, that was the two things. And, uh, you know, like, give me a quick example. If you, if you went to rent an apartment in, in the 60s, and, and one bedroom apartment in those days went maybe 98, 100, 105 dollars a month. That was That's sort of the norm. Five now. Yeah, but, but if, so when you went to rent an apartment, yeah. and you knocked on the door and they say, is the apartment available? Yes, it's available. And then they, they, they look at you and they say, yes, it's um, $305 a month. Well, of course, that's way oh, over shoot. your budget, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so it's not that they were saying you can't rent it. Mm -hmm. As long as you were willing to pay $305, which was well over a couple of hundred dollars a month over the norm, right. then, you, then you could do it. Yeah. Man. Mm. But that sort of stuff got changed. You know, like that, that was what started getting that's just things like crazy. human rights. and yeah interest here you know hmm. and you're speaking about Harry Jerome and um, at a what is it a conference or a book are you doing something oh yeah coming up this coming up at the end of this month of this there's month, a film right? the National yeah. Film Board did a film on him and so uh, yeah so I, I'm in the film of course talking about my association with Harry and so they have a, after they show the film they, they do a Q&A okay you know so and you're gonna be the guy yeah, well, one of them. I, I, I hope there will be other people that were in the film will be there okay. as well. Yeah. Now, we want to know because you know, it is Black History Month. Yes. I mean, what does Black History Month mean to you? Well, for me, it, it means it's an opportunity to finally put the spotlight on the presence of black people in this country. Right. And to emphasize some of the contributions and, and uh, uh, you know, achievements that we, we've had in, in Canada. And it's, uh, you know... Just to change it around, give, let people know that uh, if we, if not everybody that was here were, was white, Scottish, and Irish, and French. Exactly. You know? You know, and the, there is an Aboriginal community too, mm -hmm. you know, which, which tends to get lost in the yeah. shuffle. You know. Okay. Yeah, but and it means that to me. Nice. Now, there's plenty of people out there that are struggling mm -hmm. and being on the grind, but they can't you know, can't step up to the next level. So what can you tell them to actually inspire them to actually stay on the grind? Yeah, gosh. You, you, what you have to do is you, you have to develop what I call an emotional armor. Right. You know, because there's a lot of junk that comes at you, and you got to be able to roll with it. Exactly. you got to pick your fights. You know, you can't, you can't lash out at every sort of slight or injustice that comes your way. Mm -hmm. you got to pick the best ones, and then... And, and keep your eye on the prize. What's your goal? What do you want to do? Right. Where do you want to get to? And then you keep like, 
like I was 52 years old, I decided I wanted to go to law school. So I went to law school. So right. it's, you, don't, you don't have to let anything prevent you doing what you want to do. You just have to you know, push, push aside the, the, the naysayers and the people who might want to hold you back. And then see if you can achieve. You know, not everybody's. I mean, there's things I tried that I failed at. Oh yeah. You know, I, I wasn't. You know, but at least I tried them. Exactly. And then I realized I didn't have the skill or the talent or the brains to to do it. And um, so I picked things that I felt I I eventually knew I could succeed at. Yeah. Nice. I, I'm. And that's I'm what they that. should do. The same kind of. The thing. Same kind of thing. Yeah. Now. What can we expect from you in the next little while? I mean, what are you going to be doing? <laughs> I want to know what you're going to be doing. Because you mean if I can get out of bed? <laughs> <laughs> besides the, the Harry Jerome um, film, I mean, what else is next for you? Man? Well, for me, for me, I, I, I started writing. Okay. And, um, and I'm hoping that uh, I, I'm trying to hone my skills right now. And, right. Uh, I've, I've enrolled in a creative writing course so I can sort of help, help myself along in that regard. Okay. And then I'm hoping that I can maybe get a book out about my experiences as a black Canadian. And because uh, you know I everybody see, thinks see that. everybody thinks we as black people were born somewhere else, but exactly. we actually can be born in Canada. Yes, yeah, there's nothing preventing us from being born here. <laughs> yeah, and so that's I, I want to be able to talk about that experience. Man, I can only say I'm privileged to have you sitting with us on Black History Month because knowing that it is important, and we're gonna continue doing this every single year. You know what I mean? So. If we have to have you back and you can give us some, some, uh, I mean, facts or whatever, certain things about Black History Month, we're going to have you back when we do this again. Anytime. Yeah, you know I mean, Anytime. I want to thank you for coming on. Hey, listen, I want to thank you for having me. That's, man, I'm so proud I, of you. I, I, I think I'm privileged, it's great. man. I'm privileged to be sitting with you. No, no. It's, uh, we want to thank my man, Paul Wynn. And we're we going to thank my man, Paul Wynn. Alexander Boyden Jr. Next week, VOC Gospel Choir, B. Kenyon of Ice Cold Cut. This man does some fabulous things with his hair. I'm your man Valentine, baby. If you think it's your time to shine, you need to get on the ground with your man Valentine. Paul Wynn. Thanks. Thank Thanks you for coming. Again. Thanks, my pleasure. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm just excited to be sitting here.